if it's too big for you. I've even heard, I've heard myself, God, this is too big for me. And th- that sensing that, wow, it's just right for me, God says. Just the right size. I, I look at the story of, of Gideon. Think about this. Uh, God sees us differently than the way we see ourselves, especially in times and seasons of crisis. God is looking at this totally different than the way we do. He's looking at you totally different than the way that you're looking at yourself. Think about this. Every year uh, after Israel had sown their seed in the land, the Midians, the enemy, would come and eat the produce of the land to devastate the land. They wouldn't just show up and pick a little bit of the crop that was just starting to spring up. No, they would bring all of their livestock and just completely overwhelm and devastate the land. And every year when the land was devastated, people got discouraged. Every year they didn't fight back to keep the harvest that they planted. Why? Because every year... They were afraid. God said this. He says, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. He says, but you haven't obeyed me. How did they not obey God? He told them not to be afraid. I wonder if some of the disobedience that, uh, that God really gets upset with us about is our disobedience regarding trusting him. And not being afraid. I just want you to know God is paying attention right now. Now is not the time for believers to be afraid. Now is the time to trust the Lord like never before. Trust God for keeping your family. Trust God for keeping you. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Well, how many of you know this? I, I, I believe this with all of my heart, that God does not like to see his kids defeated. He doesn't. And I think God gets tired of seeing his kids defeated. Well, in this story, it continues. One year, the angel of the Lord shows up to encourage this man named Gideon. And where is Gideon? Gideon is, Gideon is hiding in the bottom of a wine press. And he is threshing out some wheat of some of the harvest. This is just a little bit that he could find to, to have at least a little bit of a harvest. Hmm. Let's start. Here's the story in Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak that was in Oprah which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, as his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress in order to save it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. (laughs) I don't think Gideon saw himself as a valiant warrior. I don't. I think Gideon saw himself as just a guy like everybody else that was afraid, just trying to have a little bit to survive. Think about this. How do you see yourself right now? Do you see yourself as a mighty man or woman of God, full of faith, victorious, more than conquerors? Well, I hope you see yourself that way, but if you don't see yourself that way, I got a feeling God sees you differently than the way you see you, especially in this time of adversity. He says, the Lord's with you, O valiant warrior. Then Gideon said to him, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? I just have to tell you this. God's not offended by your questions. I tell you what, when you are in tough situations, a season of adversity like this, you know, have the posture of your heart right when you ask God the question, but he's not afraid or or offended by any question. Ask him. Because I tell you what, sometimes it's clarity in seasons of adversity that the greatest spiritual growth and revelation comes. He said this, and Gideon goes on to question. He says, where are all his miracles? 
which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord looked at Gideon and said, Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the hand of the Midians. He said, Have I not sent you? Did you notice he didn't say, Go in everybody else's strength? He, he said, go in your strength. God's strength is perfect. God's spirit and strength inside of you is enough for your situation. This is what I love about Texas. And I'm not, hey, don't please, people from other states that see this, don't get offended, but I love Texas. When hurricanes come, when floods come, when storms come, we don't look for other states to help. You know what we do? We look towards God and we look towards family. We, we look towards neighbors and we say, you know what? With God's help, we're going to get through this. And I just want you to know what God can do in Texas, he can do in every other state. With God's help, with my family's help, with my neighbor's help, with the church's help, with my friend's help, we're going to get through this. Somebody give God praise. That's a good time to give the Lord praise. He said, in this strength that I have given you, Go in that. Have I not sent you? And he said, he said to him, God said to him, or, or he says to God, Oh Lord, how shall I deliver Israel? Behold, my family is the least in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's house. <laughs> what we need to do when God gives us a word is stop trying to discount who we are as being the recipient of that word. It sounds exactly like Moses, doesn't it? Oh, you're going to leave me? This guy with this stuttering problem? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna use me? He says, can I have some help? He goes, okay, I'll even give you Aaron. <laughs> Why do we discount ourselves? The enemy is the accuser of the brethren. Why are we partnering with the devil regarding the word of the Lord in our life? We need to stop that. And he says this. The Lord actually says to Gideon, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat Midian as one man. Now, some might say, they might ask this, why did God pick Gideon, the lowest of the low of the lowest tribe in the lowest part of the house, hiding in the bottom of the wine press? And why did God call Gideon a valiant warrior? Isn't that a good question? He's down there in the by hiding his little bit. He sure didn't look like a warrior, did he? But no one else did either. Maybe, just maybe, God is looking for someone who's at least just willing to try. He was the only one that gathered a little bit and is threshing it out. I'm telling you, he has faith that he's going to be able to keep which, which what he went and worked for. Maybe that's exactly the word we need to hear today. That maybe all God really wants us to do is just try. Just try. You're sitting there in the house with your wife and y'all have been, uh, or your husband, and you've been at each other for a long time and you've used work and busyness of life to keep the conversation from happening. Maybe today, you hear this word from me, maybe God just wants you to try. Dysfunction with your kids, dysfunction even in your own heart regarding some of the struggles that you have and, and you don't even want to look in the mirror because you don't want to even have the conversation with yourself. Here's why I'm just saying here's the word of the Lord for you today. God maybe sees you as a valiant warrior just because you try. It's time that we try. Gideon, listen, but he hears that word he responds to it, and, and Gideon is able to convince. Check this out. It went from everybody's crying and running to Gideon has a conversation with the, the army of Israel and convinces 32,000 men of Israel to join him in a battle against Midian. He's, he said, listen, on the next day when everybody's assembled, picture that, from Gideon in a wine press to 32,000 people, He's like, man, this, this might actually be enough to defeat this enemy. The next day, the Lord says, I need you to go instruct them and ask them if they are afraid. Tell them it's okay. You can, today, you can go home, and there's no harm going to come to you. Nobody's going to think bad. And just like that, 22,000 people 
packed it up and went home. There's Gideon standing there. Two-thirds leave. He's standing there. Does he get discouraged? No. He says, well, at least I have 10,000. We, we probably still stand a good chance. And God says this to Gideon. He said, no, there's still way too many. <laughs> I think that's what I said, God, can, can I have a sidebar? Can we, can we have a little private conversation here? God said, no, 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 no. The reason why I say it's too many is because the people will become boastful and they will say that they did it in their own strength. I want you to know God sometimes wants to put us in situations where the only way we get out of it is that he gets the glory because we realize it was his strength, not our strength. Don't fight it. Run towards God's plan. It may not make any sense, but if you know when you're nowhere that God's calling you to do it a certain way, then do it that way and trust him. God tells Gideon, he said, what I need you to do is I need you to get all the warriors and go down to the water and tell them to take a drink. And I will, I will judge. I will pick them. And they go to, that's all he says. He doesn't tell them any of the, he doesn't tell Gideon any of the detailed instructions. Tell them to go down and get a drink, and, and, and I'll sort it all out. And they all go down to the water, and 9,700 of these soldiers, when they get a drink, they get down on all fours and they stick their face to the water and they're lapping it up like a dog would, just drinking water just like that. But 300 of these men, they stoop down and they scoop water in their hand and they drink like this. Now, some people say, well, God, and chooses 300 and leaves 9,700, says, it's okay, you, you guys go home too. People will, people will say, well, maybe um, it was the reason why God chose the 300 is, it could have been more, but uh, he wanted someone that's alert and someone who's a little bit more uh, uh, skilled or someone who's more attentive or, or wise. I, I just think it's a little bit more simple than that. God stirred the hearts of 300 to drink a certain way, and 9,700 stirred their hearts to drink in a different way. It's not that one was greater or less than the other, but God was looking for specifically 300 men. Now look at this. The Lord then gives Gideon this plan. He said, divide the 300 into three companies. So a hundred, a hundred, and a hundred. He puts trumpets and empty pitchers into their hands, in all of their hands, and torches with the pitchers. And now when he has these three companies, the, the strategy was to have the torch in their left hand, the trumpet in their right hand, and at a special time, they would the, the, the lit torch would, and they would, they would bust the, the pitcher, and they would say, uh, a sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. And the enemy would, uh, would run in confusion and would begin to attack each other. As the, as the 300 stood there with Gideon, they saw victory just like that. And so how could that be? Well, the Midianites had hired mercenaries, other tribes that weren't a part of God's tribes, to partner with them to defeat Israel. And there had been a dream that had been interpreted just days before that Gideon was going to come against them and, bring, and God was going to bring about great victory. So there was already fear that was stirring in the enemy's heart. I need to tell you, there is fear stirring in the enemy's heart right now because God is stirring our hearts to run towards him and we will be victorious in this. Somebody give God praise. I'm telling you, God... Is on the move. And when the hundred lanterns crashed here, a sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon, they saw the light scattered all hundred in different places. A sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon flashing. A sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. And the trumpets and the light and the crashing. The enemy said, we're surrounded. 
and they turned on each other and they began to kill each other. And there was a, an amazing slaughter that happened that day. I want you to know this. When it looks too big for you, it's just the right size for you. 1 Kings chapter 18 is another story. Elijah is going, he's had this ongoing battle, this ongoing conflict with Ahab and the prophets of Baal. God does not like it when his people serve other gods. It's the, it's the first commandment, don't serve. Put any other gods before me. And there they are. Ahab and these 450 prophets of Baal are enticing the people into idol worship for, uh, for a, an ex extended period of time. And finally, uh, the Lord speaks to Elijah and said, enough's enough. Go tell Ahab, it's not going to rain anymore until you say, has that confrontation. And sure enough, it doesn't rain until three years later. Elijah confronts the false prophets and proves that our one true God, who our one true God is, and executes those 450 prophets, tells Ahab it's about to rain. Now, now remember, it had not rained for three years. Everything around them, picture this. We, many people miss this. Three years it hadn't rained. You remember our 2009 droughts? How everything was crispy? There were fires that broke out everywhere. Three years it had not rained, but Elijah says on this day, after those prophets were executed, he has that conversation with Ahab. He said, you know what? It's about to rain. He's standing there with Ahab. Elijah has a servant. He said, servant, I need you to go to the edge of the horizon and look out towards the sea and tell me what you see. He comes back after looking. He said, Master, I, I don't see anything. Elijah said, go, do it again. He comes back again. I don't see anything. He does it over and over again until he does it seven times. Remember, seven is the number of perfection. The servant comes back on the seventh time, and he, he says, Master, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. <laughs> Don't underestimate the significance and the power of something just because of its size. Listen, when it looks too big for you, it's just the right size for God. Listen, the servant didn't see the potential in the cloud, but Elijah did. We need to start seeing the potential in what God is showing us. He says, get ready. He said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And how many of you know the rains came, the breakthrough came? Let, let, hear me again. If it looks too big for you, it's just the right size for God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. It's a scripture you guys need to hear. You need to just put it deep down inside of your heart. He writes, do you not know? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Oh, look at this. He says, he does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and are tired and vigorous young, young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and will not become weary. That's the word we need to see today. Let's, it's time that we wait on the Lord. It's time that we spend time in His presence and seeking his face. Some would say this is the worst time of our life. I have to tell you, see it differently. This may be just the absolute best season of your life. Some of you guys, and I have to tell you, I'm not the bearer of bad news, but if you're a smoker, maybe now's the really, really, really good time to quit smoking. Some of y'all didn't want to hear that. Maybe there's other things that you've allowed to attach to you. You're in seclusion. You're in isolation. And God wants to speak to your, tar uh, to your heart that maybe now is the time 
But this decision, this breakthrough for you is the best season of your life. Yeah. I will, Listen, let me just tell you, I'm going to preach my own message real quick. God's given me breakthroughs almost every single day. Giving me words to me for my family, for my wife. I'm telling you, this is going to be the best season of my life. I'm not going to allow division or separation or discouragement to exist in my family. And I want to encourage you, you don't let it happen either. Now's the time to sync up and pray together and say, I'm sorry, forgive me, and then do better. Amen? Oh, this, is, this, is, this isn't a time to be afraid. This is a time to trust God. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Remember, he, Hebrews 11.1 1 says this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Hey, what are you hoping for today in the things of God? I know all of us are hoping that this season ends pretty soon. But I want you to do something a little bit different right now. I'm not saying stop believing for the breakthrough regarding the remedy for this coronavirus. But what I'm asking you to do is begin to seek God about his dreams for your life, his victories for your life, his, his vision for your life, and just move towards that. You know how today gets better? Take one step towards what he's asking you to do. Just one step. Maybe we've done this. Hey, listen. Hey, um, our marriage getaway was uh, was postponed this year because of some things that were happening. And and uh, you know what? We can have a little mini marriage getaway message right now. You're already you're you're tucked away. We'll call it the marriage tuck away. <laughs> Instead of getting away, the marriage tuck away. Here it is. You're right there with your, your sweetie. I just want to encourage you to do something. Let's make it better right now. Listen, I know we're in church right now, but you're in your house right now. I just want you to do, I know we have the six feet rule with everybody else. So if you, if you did a watch party, that's different. But if it's your spouse and you guys, listen, if he's got it, you got it. You know, you know what I'm saying? You're doing, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and just put your arms around your spouse. And just hold that person for about 30 seconds. Just hold them for about 30 seconds. And just, just thank God for them. Go ahead. Listen, 30 seconds isn't a long time. Go ahead. Just hang on right there. Oh, this is good. This is a good thing. Listen, trust me. God's got you. God's got your marriage. God's got your family in the palm of his hand. Go ahead. Just hang on. Yeah, 30 seconds seems like forever when it's something you're not comfortable doing. But my prayer is, it's going to get more and more comfortable the more that you do it. Amen. Just hang on. Just believe God. Begin to pray. I just, amen. I, this is what my hope is for you, is that God would just give you a brand new dream in the middle of the night tonight. A brand new, fresh download is a way that you can bless your family right now. Bless your friends right now. Bless your community and let the Lord bless you. Let him keep you. Let his face shine upon you because know this, he is Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and he is the God of more than enough. I'll say it again one more time. When it looks too big for you, it's just the right size of, for God. And know this, if there's ever been a time to trust him, it's right now. And we need to make Jesus our Lord and Savior. We do. Hey, I, you might be sitting back, kind of chilling. If you would, go ahead and stand your feet right now. And I, just extend your hands out like this as a sign of receiving. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, if there's ever been a time when I've needed you, right now is a time I need you more. I ask you, Lord, to heal my heart from fear and discouragement. Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. It looks too big for me sometimes, but I trust it's just the right size for you. Be my Lord. Be my great big God that's watching over me, watching over my family, 
protecting us, healing us. So give us wisdom. Show us how to walk. Show us what to do. And we thank you for great days ahead. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give him praise.